What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. Up until two weeks ago, I swear I was a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, but apparently REM was right. And I really miss hugs. Video number six from the quarantine. And this video goes out to the many, many people who watched my Zach Hill Death Grips video. I've never had such an overwhelming response in the comments section to watch one singular guy. And it was Brian Chippendale of Lightning Bolt and Black Puss. For all you Death Grips fans who are probably watching this, yes, I am noited and I have seen the footage. Now that I've listened to the Money Store, I think this that might be this generation's, like, OK Computer. I'm not sure, but it's the closest thing that I've heard that would be that significant in a while. So anyway, all you commenters, like, seriously, two out of three wanted me to do Brian Chippendale. And at least with Death Grips, I had heard of them. I'd never heard them, but I'd heard of them. I didn't know that Brian Chippendale existed until I saw all those comments. And when I get such an overwhelming response, the dude will abide. So before we get into it, I hope everyone is being safe. Hope everyone is staying inside. Hope everyone is trying to stay happy. And please check out my Patreon and uh, please like, comment, and share. Give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. Also, during this quarantine, I am offering Skype lessons. Just find me on Junk Drummer, uh, on my Instagram, and slide into my DMs. Since I don't know anything about this guy, I just went on YouTube and I searched Brian Chippendale. And this is the first video that came up. And in the thumbnail, he's wearing like what looks to be like some like gnarly Lucha Libre mask. So that's why I picked this because I really like Lucha Libre. So let's watch Brian Chippendale of Black Puss in his hilarious attic. Okay, that's definitely not a Lucha Libre mask. Where are those songs? Where are those sounds coming from? Okay. Uh, okay. He Man and Skeletor. Where are those fucking sounds coming from? Okay. So there is... Okay, I... <laughs> I see why Zach Hill fans wanted me to see this guy. Okay. I went out of my way to not know anything about this. I'm going to assume that there is some sort of microphone or some sort of pickup in his, like, whatever that is he's wearing. I thought that was kind of like a lucha mask, but it's not. And I guess he's playing along with himself, which is really a cool idea. That's, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I've also never seen uh, such a large stack of broken drumsticks before. Okay, okay. so these sounds are... So he's now made it. So he's. So that's his break. So like the music's out, and then I, I, I don't know. I might not be smart enough to analyze what's going on. Okay, 
that's that's a that's a fucking a cool concept. Uh, okay, okay. So it looks like he is, uh, you know, doing all these uh, uh, vocalizations, and he's running it through a whole bunch of pedals. There's definitely a loop pedal over there somewhere. He's writing a song. I don't know. I don't know if he's like, is he recreating a song? But he is definitely putting form and and being. Uh, you, you know what this... Okay, so this is like every drummer that's fucking fed up with band members. This is like a natural evolution of that, I guess. Like, I'm fucking sick of guitar players, and that's real easy to do. And... I've never been this speechless. Um, the drumming is crazy. The drumming is really... Like just strong and visceral, and the, and the sounds are great. That snare drum sounds awesome, but he doesn't strike me as a guy that would be like, I've got to make sure to to, to tune this snare drum until it's perfectly ready to record. This is like, this is this is art that I'm not smart enough to analyze. Is what it feels like. This feels like something that you would see in a museum like you would like you would go to like an, a modern art museum and this would be set up in the lobby and there would be like the cool people there that get it and then there would be a bunch of lame like rich assholes drinking wine acting like they would get it but he's it's he, he plays I never thought that I would see another drummer that would remind me of Zach Hill, but he sounds like he has Zach Hill like influences. Do these guys know? Do these guys know each other? Like one of one of the technical things that he's doing here that's that's really difficult is you know he's playing all this really again. This guy's got this is like like like. Keith Moon, I know that's, I know I used that in the Zach Hill video, but it's these atypical out of nowhere drum feels. Man, I'm, I'm so fucking puzzled. I'm feeling things. It's, it's, but like getting back to the technical part, like he's playing all this just fucking crazy stuff. And man, I love that snare drum sound. The snare drum sounds great. And he's at the at the same time keeping all these really good grooves happening, and then with his left foot, you know, manipulating all these pedals. I'm assuming there's like a distortion. There's definitely a loop pedal over there somewhere. And then on top of that, he's doing these vocalizations that that sound like music. This is I know that I got that wrong in the Death Grips where I, I said I thought they sounded like a downtown New York band. This has to be downtown New York. This has to be that. This has to be. I know that Death Grips are from Sacramento now. But yeah, this just sounds like... Uh, I'm using a lot of the same analogies with Death Grips, but I think I get it because the people who liked Zach Hill wanted me to do this. There's like... like This is like... Sonic Youth birthed this. But then also like... Like Lou Reed heavy metal music? Kinda? Ah, man... My silence does not mean that I don't like this. I'm just processing it. Is he doing all of those sounds? Yeah, yeah, he's doing all those sounds. This is not music that you, like, like listen, like, put on, like, hey, man, I want to hear that tune. This is, like... When you want to experience something, and especially if you want to, like, you know, I know there's probably nobody around, but this is like that thing where you want to experience it with a crowd. This is an experience as much as it is. How is he getting those two different sounds that are going on right now? It's, it's, it's 
very avant-garde, obviously. You know, I think Rashid Ali would be happy about this. I think that that... Like, I think Eric Dolphy would fucking love this guy. I think Eric Dolphy would fight to get on stage with him. And, and... It's, it's... It's beautifully ugly. There's a French word that means beautifully ugly. And it's not... It's not rehearsed. It's not... It's not, uh, it's not polished. In a, okay, okay. In a world of Instagram filters and Photoshop and Pro Tools and Beat Doctor, we can get the idea that all art and content needs to be perfect and have a sheen and polished we need this. We need, I'm glad this exists in a world where a snare drum, you know, a snare drum can't be 0 0.001 milliseconds off. We need this. We need what's going on right here. We need, this is like, this is like if Jackson, this is like if Jackson Pollock was a painter or a, if Jackson Pollock was a drummer and a musician, that's what this is. He's just, just, just throwing his his soul outside without any filters or worry about perfection and beauty, because not all art is that. I am. Man, I, I'm. It's just, it's just visceral. It's primal. <sighs> you know, I'll be honest. I probably couldn't do more than 45 minutes of this, but 30 minutes of this and getting to be in the space and experience it would just be what I needed. Yeah, man, you don't fucking learn any of this in music school, and thank God for that. Does music school leave this alone? We need this. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Dude, that guy's just, I, he just has to play, and he has to get it out. And that dude, get there. this dude has never met a fuck. I guess there was at least one person. <sighs> that was a, a completely different experience from, from Death Grips. And the, the, the approach comes from the same place. That is, oh man, you know, I'm a big like jazz, like avant-garde jazz fan. Like I love like like Jackie McLean and Rashid Ali and uh, Eric Dolphy, and you know this wasn't jazz, but it was it was a breaking down a form. Man, I sound like a uh, I sound like a museum curator. It's it's. J it's just a breaking down of n the normal way that you expect a drummer to play. And, 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 and then flips it on its head. But the guy's got chops and the guy could definitely play. Like this dude could, you know, mind his P's and Q's and, you know, play in some like standard rock band and do really well. He's obviously, uh, uh, you know, a, a man who can play. B but like it's all... <sighs> It's almost like he is getting behind the drum set and trying to get outside of his body and get outside of his mind. That's something that I have a lot of uh, problems with. You know, I have a lot of like low self-esteem when it comes to my drumming and, and I have these expectations that I feel I should try to reach 
and fulfill when I'm playing and they can really fuck with your mind and sometimes really mess with your performance. This guy seems like he just sits down and doesn't care about any of that. He's just there to be a conduit for the moment and that's jazz music. That's real jazz music. You know, I know that you can watch the Lincoln uh, Center Jazz uh, Hall Preservation whatever and think that that's what jazz music and it is. This is the closest thing I've seen to man. I'm gonna get smashed if there's any jazz knobs around here. This is the most. This is the closest thing I've ever seen to jazz, uh, like the idea of what jazz is, which is just living in the moment, filling the room, and improving off of that, and 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 playing the way that you feel that particular day. Whew, man, that affected me in a different way where death grips made me want to like like burn my neighbor's house down this made me just like want to uh, like just set down on the drums and not think and just do which is a little bruce lee-ish that's that's really mind-blowing that is that is a thing that will twist your mind up if you're ready for that experience I'll watch more Brian Chippendale, probably after the quarantine. I don't know if I need that kind of chaos in my life right now. But after the quarantine, I'm going to find out more about him. That was art. It was artful. Just art. That was just... That was Jackson Pollock. What Jackson Pollock said uh, was... And I, I, I think about this a lot. Uh, Jackson Pollock said, you know, uh, to an interviewer, I uh, deny the mistake. Because the mistake doesn't matter because my intent is the only thing that matters. I would uh, I would drive eight hours to see Death Grips. I would drive four to five hours to see that go down. <laughs> like, he has to be friends with Zach Hill, right? He has to be friends with Zach Hill. If him and Zach Hill played a drum duet, it would cause a, a vacuum of, of drumming. And I don't think that anybody within like a two mile radius that tried to play drums would be able to because Zach Hill and Brian Chippendale would be playing all of the notes and they would be taking those notes away from you. So that is uh, an episode that happened. It's just... I've never been this speechless and that means something. So if y'all enjoyed all that, Keep practicing until it's easy.